Uh, there has been a united uh, condemnation of these attacks, certainly in the, in the United States. You just heard what President Trump had to say about this. Uh, my next guest as well, Congressman Kevin Hearn of, of Oklahoma, who says he stands with Israel in the face of these brutal terrorist assault uh, by Iran back to Hamas. This is another reminder why we should not be providing ransom payments to Iran, which will be used to kill Israeli civilians. Congressman, good to have you. Now, we don't know, sir, whether those payments were behind this attack. We do know, as our Jennifer Griffin pointed out, um, that Iran has been on lots of attacks in the past. But do you know for sure whether money in these uh, ransom payments was used here for this? Well, Neil, what we do know is that uh, an um, idea of appeasement with uh, Iran does not work. They have long caused chaos in the Middle East. They hate Israel, they hate America, and they're going to do everything to call overwhelmingly uh, chaos in, in what's happening right now. You're seeing it across the world right now, the uprising against Iran. We're seeing the Middle East right now. We're seeing all affronts on our Israeli neighbors. What we do know, though, is when you have, uh, going back to the JCPOA under Obama, and now the continuance of some of that thought that when you release $6 billion in fund, while those specific dollars may not be used for the Israeli attack, we know money is fungible and other things can be done. It's not coincidental. And by the way, if you go back to the beginning of the year, uh, as the chairman of the Republican Study Committee, we put forth a number of bills to combat this potential from happening to Israel. And uh, because we saw this happening right now, by releasing funds, you're going to have really bad things happen. We're seeing people die. Uh, this is going to be long as something, as Jennifer reported and Trey reported, this probably not happened in 30 or 40 years. Uh, who knows what the end of this is going to be, which is why it's more important today than ever that we get the Republican conference uh, back in the leadership role that needs to be and get our country back where it needs to be and push back on our administration that is one time, you know, we're not sure where they are. They're pushing for, you know, appeasement in the Middle East. And now they're saying they support Israel. The Republican Party has been always supportive of Israel, and we will continue to be so. But we have to get our leadership put back in place so the Republican conference can move the Congress forward. And I do want to pursue that, sir. But, but I, I guess maybe owing to my age, Congressman, uh, you know, you mentioned that this might light the steps of the Biden administration. But uh, this is around the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur attacks, which, if memory serves me right, occurred in the Nixon administration, a Republican administration. These type of attacks continue to the Ford administration, Carter administration, Reagan administration, Bush administration. And then, of course, the Clinton administration. Uh, I could go through Bush Jr., Obama, Trump, and Biden today. Uh, it, it, this goes beyond the politics or party in the White House, right? I mean, Iran has a long history of being mischievous. And uh, we, indeed, have a long history of dealing or trying to deal with that mischief, right? Well, it has, but we also know that any time there's any show of weakness and support of Israel has uh, always been a problem. And so, you know, President Trump, uh, I know it was a very scathing tweet that he put out, but he's certainly right. When you push power back on Iran, that's the only thing that they actually know. We can go all the way back to 1979 and see what happened under the Carter administration and, and see what Reagan did. And we know the story. But Ray, well, Ronald, uh, Reagan, Ray, Ronald Reagan was president when we had the Beirut attacks. I'm not trying to put, you know, party blame here, I, but is now the time then to single out Joe Biden uh, for problems or miscues or any of that when it's happened under a variety of presidents? We don't know whether any of that money went to that conference. I understand your fear and frustration with that. We just don't know that yet. That's not to say that Iran is a passive player in this region, but I'm just saying it has a history of, of befuddling administrations, no matter the party, right? Well, I think, I think we can both agree that releasing $6 billion back to Iran is certainly not going to be something that's going to be a winning case of them being supportive of Israel. And it's the too big a coincidence. I, I understand the holidays, but it's too big a coincidence that $6 billion gets released and less than a month later, we have the problems we're seeing. It's not helpful. It's got to be something that's going to be addressed. And we fully support Israel and everything and anything they need to do to support and defend their country. So let me ask you about, you talked about being responding with one voice on this. So that could, I, I'm paraphrasing here, sir, but um, there's been a good deal to talk about now since uh, Kevin McCarthy's surprise uh, removal as speaker um, that that you have to unite around someone. Your name has come up as a possible candidate for speaker. 
are you? Well, certainly, yeah, what I've done, as I said to you before, and I've said to others, I was going to spend the time to talk to every single member. I've talked to over 200 with a lot of thoughts and prayer, I, especially what we're seeing right now with Israel. I think it's time that we do everything we can to unify our party. I know there's a lot of uh, people that are upset, members that are upset, but right now what we see is we see we need leadership in the world, and that's going to come from the Republican Party and the Congress so we can get our bills back on the floor. As I mentioned, we put bills forward back in May to prevent things like this from happening. There, nothing's going to get on the floor until we get a speakership. And because of that, uh, this is bigger than any one individual. Uh, my dear friend Jim uh, Jordan and Steve Scalise, ironically, both RSC chairs formerly, as I am today, uh, big on policy. I, I'm going to step aside and let them give their best case why they should be Speaker of the House. And we need to get together very quickly so we can get our Congress back open for business so we can move this great nation forward. And I think that's the right thing to do right now. So, Congressman, you, you mentioned Jim Jordan and, and, and Steve Scalise. They're the two best-known candidates, presumably the only public candidates for speaker. Do you have a preference? Well, certainly I have a preference that we can get to 217 because we're going to have to do that very quickly. We need to do that in, in our conference. We need to show strength to the American people, and we're going to do that in a different way, using a different rule. Typically, before it's been whoever got the majority in conference would go to the floor to get the full vote. We know, based on what happened earlier this week, that the Democrat Party, uh, and probably rightfully so, is not going to support our candidate. They're going to support theirs. So we've got to come together and, and listen to each other and know what we need to do to go forward. And that's going to be something that's, uh, that I've heard time and time again, is unity is important. I am so happy with so many people, and I didn't ask for a single vote, that asked me to run. But right now is not the time. Right now is the time to get our conference back united and move forward. It's been a very disruptive week, not only for Republicans in the Congress, but for Americans across the United States. And our country needs to show a unity of strength, and that's what we need to be doing right now. You know, there were many within uh, the Republican House, and including those who, who voted against, eight of your, seven of your colleagues who voted against uh, Kevin McCarthy, that maybe this money we get to foreign efforts, including Ukraine, isn't worth it, and we're not behind it. Uh, now there's this attack on Israel. Uh, it's very different, I, I, I grant you. I, I'm, I'm curious how you feel about that and whether you think House Republicans should speak with one voice on that. Well, you all know, and every Amer American knows, that the Republican Party has always been one that's about peace through strength. The problem with Ukraine, and it's, I've called for it time and time again, uh, is that I have not supported Ukraine uh, beyond the first vote, and here's why. I ask that our commander-in-chief come forward in a classified setting, Democrat and Republican, to tell us where the money's going and how we're going to end this, this war, this conflict. What's it going to look like? Do it in a classified setting so that neither, none of the members could talk about the strategy. That is yet to occur, and we're approaching the two-year mark. If you're the commander-in-chief of the greatest military in the world, perhaps it's ever been known, why can't you do that? You know, some wouldn't say that you don't have a strategy. We know that before the Ukrainian war, that Ukraine had one of the most corrupt governments in the world. In fact, uh, one of the gentlemen, that Jim Jordan, is investigating the links of Ukraine in the Biden administration now because of how corrupt they were. It doesn't just change overnight because the Russian, uh, Russian army invaded Ukraine. And so we've got to move forward with understanding. I think there would be an overwhelming support in the Republican Party if we could just get those two questions answered. And you see the support waning quickly. It was 57 votes, and now it's 117 Republican votes against this. And all we're asking is to come forward and tell us where the money's going and how we're going to end this game. What does it look like? And we don't want another 20-year Afghanistan war that ends in a failed pullout like we saw in August of 21. Congressman Hearn, uh, very good of you to join us, sir. Thank you very much on this busy news day as well. Uh, Kevin Hearn of the beautiful state of Oklahoma, officially not running for speaker, uh, but uh, weighing the two who are already out there, Jim Jordan and Steve Scalise. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.